Hey, this is attorney Elizabeth Potts Weinstein, and today we're going to talk about the six steps you need to take to start a sole proprietorship in California. So what is a sole proprietorship? Anytime you start a business and you're just one person, you're one owner, you automatically are a sole proprietorship without even making that decision. That's the status of your business from a tax perspective with the IRS and the state. And that's also the status of your business from a liability perspective, which means that you are personally liable, responsible for all the acts of your small business. Because it's automatic, it's relatively inexpensive to set up and can be a really good choice when you start a brand new business, especially one that you're not quite sure if it's going to work out. So the first step in starting a sole proprietorship in California is to pick the name you're going to use. This is really important because if you use your own legal name, then it simplifies the setup. But you may not want to use your own legal name. It could be a very common name. A lot of people have, and you may not be able to get the domain name for it. It may just not make sense in your industry. So you may want a different name that's more of a marketing trade name that you will use. You'll have to get a DBA for, which we're going to talk about in a second. So first you have to do is pick what name you're going to use for your business, the legal name of your business, and in your marketing so you know what steps you need to do next. The second thing you're going to do is get your EIN, your employer identification number. Now, as a sole proprietorship, you technically don't have to have an EIN. You could just use your personal social security number. But here's the thing, you're gonna to have to give out that number to a bunch of different people. You're gonna to have to use it on your business license. Anytime you are a 1099 contractor for somebody, they're gonna to have to have that number. Do you really want to use your personal social security number on all these different forms and give it to all these different people? For that reason, it can be really good to have an EIN from the very beginning. Now, eventually, if you hire employees, you're definitely gonna need an EIN. So it can kind of make sense to just go ahead and do it now. I have a video about doing that right up there. It is something that's free and easy and you can usually do online. The third step, if you're not using your legal name in the name of your business, you need to get a DBA for that name. So a DBA, doing business as registration, can also be called a fictitious business name, can also be called a trade name, is usually required by either your state or your county anytime you're transacting business in a name that's not the legal name. The idea is that if someone has a dispute with you, they need to know who they're having a dispute with. And it looks kind of sketchy if you're using a name that's not the legal name, there's no documents that link them up together. Also, if you want that DBA name, that trade name, to be on your bank accounts and on your merchant account and things, you're going to need to have a DBA. So I have a link up here on how to go ahead and do that. The fourth step is to get your business license and any permits that you might need. Typically, that's going to be at the city or town level, but sometimes it's at the county level and sometimes at the state level. Your business license might be a general business license that everybody needs. In some places, you don't need that. In some places, you just need a business license for something specific, like if you want to serve alcohol. You may also need permits at the local level, at the county or city, town level, for the use of where you are conducting your business. So what I mean is, if you're running a business out of your home and you're seeing clients there and you have a sign, you will definitely need a home occupation permit in many places. This is one of those hyper local issues. So it really depends upon the kind of business that you have, what your products you're selling, what services you're providing, the activities you have. Do you see clients in person? Do you have employees? And it depends just on that place. Some places they require you to have these kind of permits and some places they don't. The fifth step is if you sell products, or some services in some places, you're going to need a sales tax permit or license or number. It depends on the state what that it is called, but it is the way that you're going to collect sales taxes on your sales and then transmit that to the state. Some states don't have sales taxes, so in some places you don't have to worry about that. You only need it if you're making sales where sales tax applies. So here in California, I don't have to charge sales tax on legal services, so I don't have to worry about that. 
In some places, there are certain services that you do pay sales tax on. So you have to look it up in your state. The sixth step is to open up a bank account, a business bank account in the name of your sole proprietorship business. Now, technically, you could just run everything under your personal name. You could put in your personal account, you could put in your personal PayPal, etc. But that's going to be a problem later. You want to have a separate account so you can track all the income, track all the expenses, so you know how to pay taxes at the end of the year. In a best case scenario, you would also have bookkeeping too, and I think that that's a great idea. But if you have a separate checking account for your business, it'll make it fairly easy to track the income and the expenses. You also may want to get a merchant account for your business. A merchant account is an account where you can accept credit cards. You can do that through PayPal, Stripe, Square. There's a whole bunch of different systems. It's actually much easier now than it used to be you know, 10, 15, 20 years ago when I first started a business. It was very difficult to get a merchant account. Now it's pretty easy but I suggest you get one under the name of your business and have it be separate. So if you already have a PayPal account for yourself personally, have a separate business PayPal account for your business. Otherwise, you're gonna have a lot of problems later. Again, this is attorney Elizabeth Potts Weinstein. If you have any questions about starting up your sole proprietorship, feel free to go ahead and ask them below and I'll try to point you in the right direction. Hit a thumbs up if you found this video helpful and subscribe for more content for small business owners and entrepreneurs. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.